Hello, hello, welcome back, bienvenue. This has been by far my most requested topic of my entire Wasted Potential series. So let's get down to it. Let's talk all about Erica. Teen Wolf has a lot of flaws. I mean, any show does if you really get down and look at them, but Teen Wolf is a little more criminally responsible for their misdeeds against women and minorities. When we first meet Erica, she's a mousy outsider who's kind, but definitely unpopular. You can tell right away from the cliché and hurtful visual clues that they give you. The baggy clothes, the unkept hair, the acne. You can tell right away that something is just not right with her. And then you find out that she suffers from epilepsy, and it leaves you going kind of, really? She's a teenage girl. Do you honestly think she's going to let herself go that much? Like, I get the whole chronic illness and how it affects your everyday quality of life. But her clothes and her appearance are one of the very few things that she actually can control. She can't control her illness, but she can do her hair and she can do her makeup. Heels may not be the best idea, but... Is a cute t-shirt and some jeans really out of the realm of possibility for her? Look, I was diagnosed with juvenile epilepsy when I was a kid. I get her struggle better than most. But we really need to get this entire concept of you you don't look sick out of our heads. You don't know what someone lives with every day of their lives. Not all disabilities and mental illnesses are visible. I don't look sick. Yeah. I know. Do you know how hard I work every single day just to feel human? Some days I don't manage to. Some days I don't shower, I don't brush my hair, I don't shave my legs. There are days that I can't take care of basic hygiene and I forget to eat and I don't sleep. Or do any of the other million things I'm expected to care about. What I hate about this characterization of Erica is that it's this cliches 90s stereotype of the homely average girl that transforms into an absolute knockout. Is there something wrong with being your average teenage girl? We're talking about unreasonable beauty standards that are being foisted on to women and girls. Younger and younger, we're expected to look perfect. Somehow this becomes Erica's most defining characteristic. She's a teenage girl that is hypersexualized. She's pretty much there to be a pretty face. She's there to act as the distraction or to prey on boys' weaknesses. While the males have intimidation, Erica is sort of relegated to the sexy distraction, you know, reduced to her ability to beguile. If she walks into a room, all eyes are on her, you know, the femme fatale. But let's talk about the circumstances surrounding her receiving the bite first. As much as I appreciate Derek, who sought out people who would most benefit from the bite, because he sees the bite as a gift, for Erica, it was a brand new start. It was a brand new life. It was a new beginning. She was so restricted in her life. She was isolated and depressed and ready to give up. And then Derek comes along with this talk of a magical cure. Of course she's going to take it. Who wouldn't? The chronically ill character that gets a magical cure is typical TV, that everything can just be brushed under the rug. I get it. It's a fantasy that we all have, that one day we can live without that weight, that one day we'll find a cure. But TV and movies never want to show you that legitimate struggle. So Erica gets a fix, and Styles' ADHD slowly disappears. The bite as a cure isn't what actually bothers me here, though. It's Derek's creepy-ass sales pitch. I mean, he really, really took lessons from Peter here. This is a teenage girl. Derek knew exactly what he was doing when he was using his looks to manipulate her. It's manipulative and seductive, and it's just inappropriate and gross. He is seducing her in the hospital. He has very purposefully separated her from her family and the staff. He is, in this moment, a predator. 
To be fair, he wasn't actually supposed to be that much older than her in the original script, but it's still creepy as hell for him to be using his position of power over her. But Teen Wolf just sort of played fast and loose with the rules that we don't actually know how old he was anymore because they tried to age him up and make him connect more with the adults. I mean, I did an entire video on Derek, so you can go check that out too. But Derek says that the bite is her choice, but is it really? What he's offering is almost too good to be true. So overnight, she becomes a supermodel. A complete bombshell. Because, you know, that's what teenage girls look like, right? And there's this really weird hate on in the fandom for Erica suddenly, mostly from the female fans. We have this ugly duckling transformation, and it goes to her head a bit, which honestly, I can't blame her. It's new power that she's never experienced before. Suddenly, she has control of her life. Though, really, her worst crime is knocking Styles out with a car part. Here's the problem, though. The Wild Child Act is fine for a little bit, but Erica never actually develops past it. She's a criminally underutilized character. I mean, we never actually get to see her living her life after a debilitating illness. What are her goals? What are her dreams? What does she want out of life? Erica seems like the ambitious type. You know, a little bit power hungry, but we never get anything. Erica's story just sort of flatlined. She didn't have a whole lot to do other than run around in low-cut shirts and short skirts. She was arm candy and a lackey. And then it seemed like her and Boyd's story was really going to ramp up with something. And then she died. Erica didn't even have the chance to fight for her life. She had this brand new start to life. And then it was just a suddenly cut short. We didn't even get to see the chance for her to struggle with the choices that she had made. She was captured and then tortured for months on end, only to be killed off screen. The problem isn't just limited to Erica, though. Women in general are treated as second-rate characters. They're there to interact with the male characters, their plot points. Erica just didn't exist outside of what she could do for Derek. She had no story of her own. We didn't have much of a backstory for her beyond the fact that she had lived with epilepsy her entire life. So honestly, we didn't know enough about her to care when she died. The only beta that we really got to know was Isaac, you know, the white boy. And in fact, he would have been the better choice to have killed to actually hurt Derek. But instead, Erica was completely disempowered and then cut down. She had no history beyond the fact that we knew she had epilepsy her entire life. I mean, who are her parents? What are her hobbies? She had no love life. She had no friends. There was the potential of developing a really close relationship with Boyd. But that ultimately went nowhere. Rumors were that her management didn't want her in a biracial couple on screen. But who knows how much of that is actually true. And then there was also Styles. We could have had Catwoman and Batman. Erica was meant to subvert the damsel in distress, but she was really just used as a foil to elevate other characters. She had no story outside of what she could contribute to the main character's journey. Why did her character have to die? Couldn't she have just simply left like she wanted to? She wasn't even the only one. Other women were killed off rather than just leave. Every female character is given a few attractive traits. They're giving this provoking potential. But female characters are plot devices, not complex characters. They're there to motivate the male storylines. Most female characters are killed off before they have the potential to become more, to grow. Or they're held back, so they're not on par with the male characters. Teen Wolf was supposed to be this world without sexism and racism and homophobia, but to live? Well, you really needed to be a dude and white. They're the ones that get the best storylines. 
and everybody else sacrifices themselves for you. It sucks that Erica's story was cut short because of whatever choices that were made behind the scenes. But even in that short time lived, Erica deserved better. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like more content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.